Good morning, breakfast followers. Frank, it looks like he got us some new song sheets. You know what that means? How do you like the color? Did you? Yeah. Yes, you did. Now let's do something. Some of them got the right addresses on the back, and some of them don't. Yeah, that one's got the right address. Oh, that helps. We're not going to the breakfast club. I mean, to the uh, pee feeders. Yeah, it's Freedom Phoenix. Freedom. Everybody correct that. Yeah, see, that's why I do that. That's exactly why I do that. All right, it's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix. Yeah, write the little S after it. All this. All right, let's do Hail, Hail. It's easy, Mark. Hail, Hail, the gang's all here. Morning breakfast lovers, morning breakfast lovers. Chow, 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 chow. We all want chow. That is what we're here for now. Okay, we are good. Done. Got to got say, got to say. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get you up to date on some of the things that's happening. One of them is we need more air conditioning. The, uh, we have been six years in development of Freedom Phoenix. There was a plan. Anybody else? Like me? It's happened before. <laughs> to sum up real quick what the plan was this. When the internet first became available, it was like, uh, this is how I, heck, I met online uh, Michael Kilsky back in 93, 94 online on a Arizona right to keep and bear arms. What you remember? Back in the day. What happened was, is that when we started getting emails, had an email address, and we could see that they were introducing legislation in small communities in New Jersey and Connecticut and Florida and New Mexico that was identical to what was going on in Arizona, we're going, oh. For the first time, the people were able to be able to see what was happening in real time and how it was an orchestrated, concentrated, goose stepping, left jack boot, right jack boot, the jack boot on your throat party effort to put us under total control. So we're going, okay, how do we make use of this? Well, there's enough computer geeks and libertariandom, you know, to get us by, okay? So we knew that the internet was going to be our vehicle by which we could bypass the lamestream media. So that's century, okay. Now, what happened was we started doing newspapers. We started doing email. We started doing websites for campaigns. In 1996, Gary Fallon ran for Phoenix mayor. Front page of the B section, Arizona Republic. You know, the first cyber candidates. And then we started getting awards and all this kind of stuff because all we'd have, it was just simple text links that go to bigger documents and had, you want to know what Libertarian thinks about this? Be happy to tell you exactly. Okay. So now we're up against them philosophically. So then they go, yeah, but you want to, you know, uh, shoot up baby prostitutes with heroin and you know that kind of stuff. What they didn't get was the freedom aspect, and we knew that as time went on, oh, they're going to get it because it's inevitable what happens with the collectivist state of society like we have. You have what we're going to be talking about here, what happened in Tucson, where the gentleman, you know, a, a two-tour Iraq veteran, you know, on Memorial Day, he's been memori being memorialized by Sheriff Mack and Stuart Rose, Oath Keepers, and a bunch of other activists. I know Ed's going to talk about it a little bit. He went down there. Uh, Drew did the videotape for Gary Franchi's realityreport.tv that we're going to watch some of it. And I'm just going to have you watch the uh, relatively short, just a few minutes, of Sheriff Mack reading the proclamation that they did while the guy's wife is standing there. And it's just so, it's a horrendous story, but this is just being repeated over and over, and it's getting worse. All over the country this is happening. Busting in, we'll see if we can find something. 
So this is, um, and, and for someone to have gone to tours in the name of fight for our freedom, I'm wondering, what was that? I mean, the Fourth Amendment mean anything anymore? It doesn't, you know, so anyway. So we'll go ahead and talk about that a little bit. I got a copyright violation notice this last week from YouTube threatening to turn off all my YouTubes of the Ron Paul Evolution, all that kind of stuff. Now, fortunately, I never trusted them anyway, so I always kept it in files, and we created on Freedoms Phoenix our servers to be able to just load video and then play it out ourselves. But, of course, YouTube has a lot of its convenience, and people go to it and so on. And it was easy, and I don't care. But I knew that they were going to start taking stuff down for the stupidest reasons, whatever they could think of. This is why I know QE3 is coming. You ready? Here we go. I get a notice from YouTube. says, oh, Gannett, their TV station, Channel 12, NBC affiliate, KPNX, says you're in copyright violation of their goodies. So we're taking down this video, and if you do it again, you're going to lose your channel. And I go, and I'm talking to Michael about this when we set up the servers and everything. I go, I knew this eventually would come. Let me tell you what happened. You remember when they did the TARP vote? Shattuck comes back as the one that voted against the Republican, reintroduces it, it gets passed. I made it clear to Tom Jenny and the Goldwater guys and um, Shattuck's people and everything, I go, you do this. And I'll tattoo a swastika sticker on your butt, and you ain't never getting elected again. And I hope you keep running. We're going to have us some fun. I mean, I was animated. I go, go ahead, make my day. Well, they did, okay? That's when we did the signs that said, National Socialization of the Economy isn't fascist, dot, dot, dot. When I do it, John S.S. S. Shatner. And everywhere he went, we were there with those signs. And what happened was, he decided... Uh, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to be running anymore. When we had the first speech of the uh, Americans for Prosperity, Tom, Jenny, you know, my, you know, they, them, those, they had the first Tea Party at the mall between the House and Senate and the Arizona Legislature at Capitol there. And I get up, and they ask you to speak, and I get up, and, and the only reason they had me is because we had those big, it's not my debt billboards and the Levolution and all that stuff. So they're like, okay, it'd be kind of, you know, obvious we didn't have Ernie up there. So I get up, and the first thing I go, one, I'm not with any of these guys. I just want to make sure you're clear about that right up front. Because they had KFYI there, you had uh, um, J.D. Hay Hayward, you had um, uh, Shattig and Franks and all these guys, yakety, 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 yakety. I'm like, I don't have nothing to do with these guys. Because I knew, and then Andrea Garcia went up with that sign and held it up in front of Shattig about from here to that projector. Yeah. Oh, I didn't like that none too much. Oh, you got your facts uh, wrong, mistaken. I never uh, humming, humming, humming. Because they are in the mindset that the internet is like not there or something. And I'm going, look, do you think, in my speech, five minutes, I just go, do you think these young revolutionaries haven't got videotape of everything you ever said, everything you ever done, every C SPAN, every vote, every everything? Then you're going to come in and try and say something else in the next election cycle and they're going to like forget? I go, you don't know Shelton like we know Shelton, okay? So I'm going, all right, 4409. So they decided it was best not to play. Well, what happens? John Chattig gets appointed as a senior fellow at the Goldwater Institute, man. He got his. Don't think you don't get, you know, $700 billion and lay it for trillions of dollars of other stuff and you don't get taken care of. Know what I mean? At a function, you have these SLR... Single lens reflex look like 35 millimeter cameras that are digital now. Well, I don't want my picture to, okay, you just put it there and it's on video, we're recording the whole time. John Shattuck is talking to an activist going, well, yeah, I made a mistake and the pressure and this guy and that, and that. boom, goes on YouTube. Hello. <laughs> so this is what they are worried about. When that tarp happened, of course, here's NBC, we gotta find somebody that's against it. Let me think for a second, big giant, tab sticking out of their Rolodex that says, talk to Ernie, okay? So they call me and they say, well, what do you think of this tarp? I go, you already know, come on down, okay? They need the other side. They come in, my wife Donna takes the big sign that says, it was always a libertarian activist revolution. Remember those signs? We 
We put that in the yard. I went out front. They came, interviewed me, and it went like this. I go, $700 billion? You think that's all they need? That's this week's check. All the other interviews, oh, well, these people are smarter than I am. They know what's best. I just have to leave it to them. I put my head in the sand. I don't know any better. You know, let them deal with it. They're the professionals. And I'm going, oh, we knew it was going to happen. That was September of 2008, two and a half years ago. All of a sudden, now, I get a thing from YouTube saying I'm in copyright violation. And let me tell you what the YouTube was. Because I didn't trust them to archive it, Donna was taking still pictures. She didn't have video of the actual interview. So what we did is we set up our um, video camera in our living room and taped my TV playing an interview in my living room of me. <laughs> Copyright violation. <laughs> See my point? Who do you complain to? You go... Seriously? Well, I'm going to tell Freedom's Phoenix on you. Hello? This is why we've done this. I know what's coming. Last weekend, Adam Kokesh was going to be one of the writers in the magazine. There was only two guys that didn't make it in the mag. I asked about three dozen people, thinking I'd get like a third of them to write. Almost every single one of them submitted an article. I'm going to read the names of the, the authors. You're going to be freaked out. A lot of you guys know who these people are. You know, like Ron Paul stuff. What happened is only two were um, Josh Manuel from Ron Paul Forums, and I needed him for the 4th of July edition coming out this next month anyway, and Adam Kokesh. Adam Kokesh was, uh, um, you know, getting beat upon by the man at Thomas Jefferson Memorial, so I give him a slide, Okay. What he did, there was a ruling in the last couple of weeks saying that dancing is demonstration. And you can't demonstrate at a federal memorial without a permit. So it means no dancing at that. So what they do, these flash mobs, they go in and they have their iPods on, and they be kind of three, and they make YouTubes, and they're just out there having to get, boom, and who's gal? Made the ruling. Dancing is demonstration. Okay. Define dancing. Don, come here a second. I want to show you what got him arrested. There was a couple there, and they said, if you dance, and they went like this. Arrested. That was it. That was it. That was it. Arrested. So well, here's Adam Kokesh. He's going, he's got his eye, but you don't hear anything. He's like. <laughs> They take them. Yeah, you're a cop. Come here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always wanted to do that. <laughs> they, he's going like this. Adam's going, hey, man, I'm not resisting. He picks them up Slams and him. body slams them into the yeah. wall. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Then he chokes them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's that's, that's not even the best part. And he goes, I can't remember what he says, you know. The last morning, he has both hands on his throat. Yeah. Adam is like going, has his mere sunglasses on, and I know what he's thinking. He's like, you just keep doing it, buddy. It's all good. Because Adam Kokesh now is a daily, primetime, evening, big-time TV talk show host that has the ability for 20 million homes in America to hear him or watch his show on their cable, satellite, whatever. What's he on? Russia Today. RT, Max Eyes, all these guys are on it. Putin, the Russian freaking government, is spiking back against the U.S. for all those decades of Voice of America, okay? They go, oh, we know how this works. We're going to do it y'all, okay? So here you have this Fallujah peace pick Marine that did the speech, you know, uh, you know, we know that the enemy's not some far off sand heap somewhere else, but right here at home at the Revolution March. You guys remember that speech? Russia today has, he gives him a contract, his millions of dollars, he moves to Washington, D.C., he starts doing it. So what's the first thing they're going to do? You know what? We go with Thomas Jefferson anymore. <laughs> this happens. The NBC affiliate is right there. They knew this is going, filming it, not a second on the mainstream mainstream 
So that sentry is medium, okay? It's okay, it's all good. Don't worry about it. So what did they do? Today, right now, I just uh, text uh, Adam this morning, and he's like, you know, not dead yet. <laughs> they go, all right, fine. He goes to Facebook, he's on RT. All week he's been promoting. Dance party at TJ's. Okay? <laughs> so they're going to Thomas Jefferson Memorial. Right now, they're getting beaten and arrested and whatever. Let me tell you how this hit. As they were, are they already there, 3,000? Really? Yeah. They got 3,000 people confirmed. Right. Yeah. Now, this is what happened. I had to do traffic school last Saturday. Uh, you can't read. Uh, I got to read all these yeah. articles. I got to start editing and make sure the stuff on the articles are resubmitted. So they're like, you can't read or you won't get a certificate and everything. You got to participate and everything. And he's going on saying, yeah, you know, we need the cameras because it gets me more business, you know? And, and he's like, oh, we need to have these people, crazy people that stop the cameras, and they just don't love their children and, and whatever and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going, you know, I'm going to get out of this. Just so everybody knows, this started back in the early 2000s when they had the companies that made these cameras did contracts with the city of Mason, Phoenix, all these others. Because he was going on about we're number one, and like, number one, number one, we're always number one. Everything, number one. Everywhere else they stop except Phoenix. And I go, how do you get those stats? Well, oh, so how many tickets are written? And I'm going, oh. Uh, <laughs> well, what they did is, one, they put the cameras in. <coughs> Two, the contracts that the companies that made the cameras, the companies like Hughes, uh, Bill Systems, all these guys that started, Raytheon, all these guys that started that, had in their contracts, and we knew this, um, we still have our restaurants, a guy named David DeGroote that had these louver things that go over your license plates, and they came after him, closed his bank accounts. It, it was just amazing. Helicopters over his house constantly. He videotaped them, banging on his door. The cops, I mean, they hassled him big time because it was money. But he's on Mesa that they had to shorten the yellow light to get more <clears throat> light running. Mm -hmm. Cause more accidents, yeah. more death, and nobody cared. Yeah. So we made a big staking deal out of this. So I, you know, share that information. Yeah, but uh, 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 I can go back and read and you will bother me, right? That's what I thought. Okay. So I sit down there and did all my reading and everything. Nobody bothered me. At the end of the day, oh, thanks for your participation. That was great. And kind of, you know, yeah. Because I know what happened. His wife was over there Googling me. You know, so I'm just going, you want to get out? Just make sure you say something they don't want you to talk anymore. Then you can just sit there and read a book. Okay? <laughs> so what happens is this whole thing about the truth getting out there, bypassing the control mechanism, is what I've always known since we've been doing printing press back in 94. We did the uh, newspapers in 92. This has been a continuation of this. What we have done is we've created a magazine that is digital that goes on these tablets and it's totally interactive with the internet. <laughs> this is the cover of our magazine because I can't. Okay? Now, how it works is I just go like all that, okay? It is a magazine on these tablets, iPads, Zooms, even my smartphone. I download the entire magazine and read it wherever I want to go. It is 83 pages, our first. This is the coolest code to go. But it also has all the pages are down here at the bottom. I can just pick one. I go in it and I say I want the thumbnail view. It puts up all the pages and I just click on which page I want to go to. I can look at, you know, big <coughs> pictures. I can do, like, this one is on uh, using passports and traveling. I turn it sideways. You know, I go up. I expand it. Oh, you're confusing with someone who cares. The, uh, <laughs> this right here, you know, pictures and stuff. And I'll tell you why I don't care. In 2005, when we started Freedoms Phoenix, my webmaster said, you can't have all these graphics. You do this, dial-up won't be able to use it. And I go, who the hell says there's going to be dial-up? <laughs> 
in the future. Think in the future. I'm taking a flag and going, bam, out in the future for these guys. So what happens is all us old fogies don't mean squat, okay? <laughs> what it is is Generation Next, and that's what this entire magazine was for. I told all the authors, I said, what I need is imagine it was four years ago. Right now, when the revolution first started, what if you had an opportunity to inject into these young minds, they're just starting to get active, they're starting to see Ed again, they're getting ready, they want to do the revolution, just make signs, what are you doing, let's go, let's rock and roll. What if you could get in their head an idea? And what idea would you get? Like what we did in Cairo? All the Levolution artwork and everything is translated into Arabic. We know the truth. You own yourself. You don't need Pharaoh number 376. Okay? <laughs> this is what's going on. We have Haria Phoenix, which is Freedom's Phoenix, translated into Arabic. You guys don't even... You, oh, man, I'm going to show you. you got to get some good good. You go right here, and you go translate Arabic. The entire page translates into Arabic. We have an Arabic website, Arabic Facebook, Arabic Twitter. It's all in Arabic. We send, when you go through this translator, it translates everything, and we send that link that's up there. When they go onto these, they just click on one of these links, and watch what happens. It goes anywhere on the internet, anything that we post in English, and it translates it to Arabic. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. We have 39 <laughs> languages. This revolution is worldwide. You planting a flag out there for it? I was. Ah, they had no idea who they were up against. Man, I, oh, man, I'll give me some good good. Because what happens when you have all these guys that are starving? All these young people, they're looking for somebody who's going to save them or something. What if you infect in their head the concept that they own themselves? What, it's not going to be a, you know, Obama going to save them, or Hillary wants to meet with the rebel leaders, or they're going to have some kind of, uh, you know, a liberal or conservative or fascist or communist uh, authoritarian kind of government. How about they have none? How about they get to be their own government? How about they don't have to find out who the next person is that's going to steal from them and they owe allegiance to? How about they don't have a ruler under what's under their hat? How about that? What's going to happen? I don't know. We're going to find out. <laughs> That has been the mindset since God and I started this in the late 80s. Everything that we have done has been at least two to five years ahead in the future. So I went to all these guys and I said, look, there is going to be another wave for the 2012 Ron Paul speaking tour. So that's how I see it. They want me to go on tomorrow. I'm going to be on the Ron Paul money bomb radio thing that they're doing. I'll be on at 7 o'clock um, my time tomorrow night, I think. So I, I go on, and what am I going to say? I'm like, you guys still voting? I mean, you know, I, I go, I get to say what I want to say. But I go, if you're going to do, get your butt out there, and you know, the message and so on, Ron does a really good job, and if you don't have anything that you can do, or time, or whatever, you know, throw them a couple of bucks, and click there, go do it, rock on. I mean, I said, I'll do that. And they go, fine, cool, that's good enough. So Ron sent me, his one article he wanted published was, don't raise the debt. So that's what he features this song. I'm going to name some of the uh, people that are in this magazine. Nick Barnett, you know, he helped with a lot of the technical stuff, so an article in here, how to use a tablet. Ron Paul, Thomas Woods, Goyette, Charles Goyette, Jacob Hornberger, Boston Tea Party, Mark Victor, Ian Freeman from Free Talk Live and LRN, Walter Block, Simon Black on Expatriating, Living Around the World, uh, Mark Nesman is Economic Discussion Group here, He's an international attorney that gets passports for people that want to leave, okay? Um, so long and thanks for all the attention. L. Neil Smith, Glenn Jacobs, wrestler Kane on the WWE, really good libertarian, smart guy, you'll like him. Anthony Gregory, oops. Anthony Gregory, he's only about 30 years old, and he is an amazing mind. I had no idea he was that young. He's on Lou Rockwell all the time. Doug Gazillionaire Casey, okay? Oh, his article's good, all about anarchists in the Tea Party. Oh, he hammers on the Tea Party. You don't like this one. Maybe you want to. 
<laughs> so I got tea part. Scott Beezer does all the graphics, uh, the illustration. Bill Buford, William Buford, he was um, Green Beret. He lives in Southern Arizona and big time anarchist. They always got Brock Lorber, Butler Schaefer, why well, you guys know who he is. James Babb, we won't fly.com, remember the opt out stuff and so on, and uh, Thanksgiving. And <coughs> Stephen Molyneux from Toronto, you know, Mr. Uh, you know, uh, no state, okay? Michael Nystrom, Daily Paul. Gary Franchi, Restore the Republic. Terry Bressy, Checkpoint USA. All the stuff about the video, the best stuff that he had about him from December 2002 to now. He went to the Ninth Circuit, won on a bunch of issues. Now it's back in court. I mean, this thing, we knew what was coming with this uh, Gestapo thing on the road. Karen Kwiatkowski. Karen Kwiatkowski, Lieutenant Colonel in the Pentagon, while they were lying going to war, she's the one that did the intelligence analysis. She knew crap and writing about it on Lou Rockwell and Colonel Hackworth's site, military week, or whatever the heck it was, soldier something. So she's been great. Mark and Rose, well, he's hardcore. Ben Sopranowitz, well, you remember him. He's an editor of the Las Vegas New Journal, wrote Descending the Waco, uh, Waco Killers and the Ballad of Carl Draga and, you know, anti state guy. Pal Gamble, senior editor of Freedom's Phoenix. Let me tell you what he wrote about. He wrote about. The state legislature had a bill that said you have to show the note. Okay, remember this? You have to show that. It's our law anyway. We're just saying another, once again, they passed a law saying you got to follow the law. So when they do this, I, I can't keep track of how many times they do that. So they go, this law says you really, 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 really got to follow that law. Okay? So it passes in the Senate 28 to 2. Goes to the House. What happens to it? Oh, we're going to hear it humming, and we kind of lost it, and we subtracted and put in a fireman something. You're for firemen, right? I mean, you know, it is the guy that tried to bring it back, need details, a seal or whatever his name is, oh, yeah. tries to bring, go to bring it back. All of a sudden, he's gone. It doesn't show up. He doesn't get introduced. What, what happened? Carl Denninger from Market Ticker, this is going on countrywide, everywhere, except here in Arizona. It's like the Arizona Project. Everybody in the planet knew it, but the Arizona Republic didn't publish anything. Mm -hmm. So while this is going on around the country on the internet, crazy what's happening in Arizona, that legislator, all of a sudden, $100,000 was forgiven off the principal of his house, and he pulled the bill. There's a general there somewhere, you think? Hell no. The internet. That's why they want to get it. Then we have a... Uh, some other guys you don't know. Okay. So this is 30 some or 83 pages that's interactive. You have video, audio, graphics that lead into the internet. It goes into the site, comment on the stuff. It's by subscription to have that access to be able to comment and read and download and all that stuff. But the file of the magazine is a PDF that in the low res version, works fine on here, is about four meg. Any and everybody is encouraged and expected to forward it to the planet. It went up at midnight last night. It's already went boom. The Lovolution, the entire next generation, now has a direction and a mindset that's not about the Constitution. It's not about, it's about rulers over your life. It is about being free as an individual. Now, Bradley Jarvis, right? Yes, sir. Bradley Jarvis was a cop in Manchester, right? Uh, <clears throat> in New Hampshire. Okay. New Hampshire. He's like, uh, you know, hey, man, I'm, you know, I, I met him when I was there during the Revolution back there, and I remember him going, well, you know, the law is law, and I got, you know, the Latin. But I'm law enforcement against prohibition, and I think it's bad, and so on. He's going to give a little spiel on how he went from Flashing you up beside the head, give me your marijuana cigarette, oh, by the way, you got something in your wallet, to being a voluntarist. You know, just kind of, man, I'm, you know, I've, I've seen where the rubber meets the road, and I'm telling you, you don't want to be there. So he's going to be talking about his. He'll take uh, 20 minutes or so to do that. I want to give Sheldon an opportunity. Um, what we need to do is also we got to, um, I wanted to show you uh, Sheriff Max saying, and I'll do that towards the end. But I wanted to go ahead and have uh, Sheldon tell you about his shirts. Go ahead and do that real quick. If anybody wants to get these shirts, we, we just had these made. Uh, just got them out on the press. If anybody wants to get any of these, of course, like we just did. It says confronting pirates and exposing hypocrisy. So, 
Yeah, I go around the country, man. They go, do you know 4409? <laughs> <laughs> so they're up here, I have this, and then they come and yell. So anybody wants to come get it? Michelle, what's the same deal? Michelle, what do they say again? <laughs> What's your shirt say again? Confronting pirates and exposing hypocrisy. <laughs> <laughs> His videos and what he does is so popular. I go anywhere around the country. They're like, 4409? 4409? Well, he just made like the final push the button on the magazine to get his ad in because he's shelving. You know, I just knew it was going to be the last minute. So we get that, and he's going to get a lot from it. The, um, oh yeah, you need to do a video on the magazine or something, you know. Or you can give me a lot of money, I don't care. You know. <laughs> Before we get to Bradley, uh, let's go ahead and do at least 10 minutes or so that you can tell us about what happened in Tucson. And while you do that, I'll pull up uh, the video. Oh, and Adam, I mean, uh, Alan, Corwin was to be here this week, and I got so busy and I forgot and didn't put it up in time, and he wanted more promotion to do it, so we're going to do it next month. And you know, we'll make a big deal out of Alan, uh, you know, make nice. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ed Valeo. Hey, Ed. <laughs> were made on the part of everyone concerned in this incident. But from what I can tell, none of the mistakes that were made were anywhere near the death penalty. Because that's the major issue of the incident. Is the death penalty. Do humans on this planet have a right to take the life of other humans. That's the bottom line. Because that's what happened. Now, you're going to hear a lot of things in, about, about law enforcement doing their job, which is dangerous, and getting in a position where they fear what they and feel they are forced to act. <clears throat> now in these days of home invasion robberies, 
where home invaders masquerade themselves as police, we can no longer use the call of police as a representation of authority. Now, I don't know what the outcome of this incident legally will be in Tucson regarding the sheriff's office. I don't know what the outcome will be, but I can foresee what the possible outcomes are. Now, the ideal outcome is for all of those who are in authority to bring all of the information to those 100% with no reservation. <coughs> it should be investigated, it should be looked at with a fine tooth comb. <coughs> Everyone who made mistakes need to be made accountable personally for their own actions. Tell us about the event, how many people were there? How many people were there? There was a couple hundred people show up. It was everybody that you could think of. I mean, Code Pink was there. Um, you know, Ron Paul people were there. There was Republicans, Democrats. There were the Libertarian. I marched with with uh, Warren Severin, the, the chairman of the Arizona Libertarian Party, who gave me a good interview of of how Libertarians, with their non-initiation of force, they believe this was wrong. Let's go ahead and watch this. Cause this yes, please. This, this does a good watch job. This. What I thanks, Ed. That's it. We, we gotta get to Bradley. Sure. I, I want to. I want to give you what this is really. What is. You want to know more? Come talk to me afterwards. Okay. What <laughs> happened was there was an opportunity. We we're gonna make money and do it because of the drug war. I mean, you know, it's a uh, militarized law enforcement. I talked about it a lot on the air yesterday. In Alabama, there was a conservative talk show uh, radio station that the tornadoes took out their satellite dishes. So they had my show because um, Rush Limbaugh will not let them take it over the internet because of copyright things or something, whatever. It has to be by the satellite. So they don't have any programming if they can't get something by um, the internet. So I've been in the Rush Limbaugh slot all this last week. They get a dose. <laughs> When Rush comes back, they're already screwed up, man. <laughs> I don't, man, let me tell you how it be, okay? So it'll be interesting to see if the station, you know, people are like, we want to learn it, okay? So I was talking about this quite a bit. The thing is, is that it's not about how they did what, it's that why they were there. It's, you know, it's plants being exchanged voluntarily between adults. I mean, who cares? The point was, is that this guy, a rack veteran, two tours, there were no drugs in his house. There was no contraband. What happened, a commotion, his wife's screaming, there's guys out there going to bust in or something. She takes her kids, goes in a closet or bathroom. He takes his AR, doesn't even take it off safety. He's going down, they bust in the door, shoot and kill him. He never even took it off All safety. Right, hold on a second, sir. That was not facts and evidence, okay? If you're gonna Real quick, come on, go, go, go. If you're going to make a conjecture, how about he's a trained Marine, he's got people busting through his door, he's got his family okay, behind okay. him, he shows up with yes. AR on, full auto, full ready to go. He's aiming at the door, they bust through the door, oh my god, a SWAT, put it on safe and set it down and they kill him. Oh. How about that? That's the point that I'm making. They were saying that, yeah, you know, he would have shot us, but he had it on safe. Here's a two-tour Marine. Two-tour. He wanted to shoot him, it wouldn't have been unsafe, okay? So the point was, don't interrupt. So the point is, is that they come in, they kill him, okay? 60 something bullets, he's laying in there. His wife had already called 911 before they even came in, I think. So what happens is, you know, the, the crew, he's still alive, amazingly. Get to the pyramid, no, 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 no. They wait till he dies. Then they tell him that, 10, whatever the heck, you don't need to come anymore, he's dead. So this is just, and, and he had no drugs. What it was is they did four of these in a neighborhood around him because his brother and friend and somebody and kind of, and they, him too, what the heck. This is going on all over. So it was a perfect opportunity for OT and Sheriff Magner and everything to come make this point. And his wife is just, it's amazing what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and play this. It's, it's fairly short. It's fairly short. 
This is what Sheriff Mack uh, had to say about it, and then I'll uh, we'll go ahead and get to Bradley, and I'm sure he may, Mr. Uh, officer, may have uh, something to say about it. It was, it was extremely tough, and um, there you are. tears. No, to me. Uh, when Mrs. Moran showed up uh, and supported us, we were doing Whereas on the 5th of May, 2011, in the United States of America, in the sovereign state of Arizona, in the city of Tucson, Marine veteran Jose Guerrero was shot dead in his home by constitutionally harming himself, as he was trained to do, to protect himself and his family from masked man busting down his front door. And whereas the Pima County Sheriff's Department, under the control of Sheriff Dubnik, the Pima County SWAT team to execute a search warrant upon the residence of Marine veteran Jose Guerrero. And whereas waking from a dead sleep, Jose Guerrero attempted to answer the yelling at his front door within the allotted 20 seconds, when the door comes down, Jose Guerrero, with his rifle at his side, was ready to defend his home against unknown masked persons who showed themselves to his wife as they ran past the window. The SWAT team entered and shot the Marine veteran. 61 times. Oh my. Whereas, it is the policy of the Pima County Sheriff's SWAT team to execute search warrants in this manner, where the homeowner or person residing therein is known to be constitutionally in possession of legal firearms. Be it known, this incident is in clear violation of the Bill of Rights. Amendments 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. The Constitution of the United States of America, where every citizen has the inalienable right to keep and bear arms to protect himself against government tyranny or a criminal threat to his person, home, or family. Be it further known, the Oath Keepers of... All Oath Keepers. All Oath Keepers. keepers of the United States and internationally are supporting this special memorial ceremony in honor of United States Marine veteran Jose Guerrero who died at the hands of sworn police officers who violated their oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America by not protecting and defending a constitutionally armed citizen of the United States of America. Be it resolved, the Oath Keepers of America do hereby stand united against constitutionally illegal government in that all United States citizens are presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law, and that the sheriff counties be urged to not use the force of SWAT in search warrants on people with no criminal or violent record or other constitutionally armed citizens unless there are sufficient judicial probable cause to believe the lives of United States citizens may be in jeopardy. Be it further resolved that we, the below signed, urge every deputy sheriff, probation officer, bailiff, highway patrolman, court officer, and every other person who has taken an oath of office to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, to read and study the Constitution and the Federalist Papers, the primary source of the Supreme Court constitutional information, particularly Papers 28, 29, and 46, that preceded the writing of the Constitution so that they might never themselves be in the position of taking up arms or legislating laws against the very people we have sworn to protect and defend. Signed this 30th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2011. This is really a great American tragedy. I'm a <clears throat> this is not going away. And this is just a symptom of a much larger problem. And it's just gonna keep getting worse. One of the articles in uh, the magazine, Brock Orber, was talking about uh, how revenue, they did stories on this, and some television uh, stories about how they're using all of this stuff for revenue enhancements. They're going broke. They're, they don't have money. We don't have the money. They're good, you know, so what do they do? They go, all that money in your truck? They'd be buying that, okay? So this is going to get uh, not bad. What I want to do is have Bradley Jarvis talk to us. I met him when I was in New Hampshire, Manchester, an event, while he's standing there in his police uniform, thinking that as a policeman, he could be in a position better to protect my rights and to advocate for a peaceful society by wearing the badge. He's going to tell us if he's changed his mind. 
The government, in my opinion, is the largest, most successful criminal organization. Yeah. 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 And I was a part of it. I was a part of it. I got paid, I got paid exceptionally well to do very little. And I could have retired when I was 38. So if I had stayed in, I could have retired in about eight years. But to me, being a moral person is more important than getting a fat government paycheck. And since I've quit, you know, I, it's been hard on me, and I, I miss a lot about what, what I used to do, because I used to love when, when I got to investigate a real crime. Someone who had gotten hurt, someone who had something stolen. Any time that I could investigate a crime with a victim, I was helping someone. Any time the police enforce what's called the malum prohibitive law, which is a Latin phrase, which means wrong because it's declared to be wrong, the police create a victim. In New Hampshire, if you pour water into a milk jug, it is a misdemeanor and you can do a year in jail. And that is my favorite example of an insane law. And it's, I, I kid you not, there are so many victimless crimes. And what's completely, which makes no sense, is the police mess up all the time enforcing the law and they get away with it, but you have to know every single law at all times or else you can be held accountable for it. Because ignorance of the law is no excuse. And this, this concept of, 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 of the way this, the system is set up, I just, after I studied it and learned about it, I became what's called a voluntarist. Do, do any of you know what a voluntarist is? No. How many of you think it's wrong to initiate violence against someone? Re please raise your hand. I said, I said initi initiate violence. I didn't say who thinks it's wrong to initiate violence. All of you who raise your hands are voluntarists. And another word for voluntarist is anarchist. And the word anarchist is, is, is misused. And people, when someone says anarchist, they think of throwing Molotov cocktails. <laughs> but that's not true. Anarchists and voluntarists believe that the number one central tenet of all morality is the non-aggression principle. And that's no one has the right to initiate violence against someone else. What these guys did in the, this SWAT team, they are a gang of criminals. They're initiating violence against a peaceful person who isn't doing anything wrong. And whether you wear a uniform, a piece of metal on your chest, or have some sort of ID in your pocket, it does not take away the responsibility that you have as an individual not to initiate violence against somebody else. There are people in federal prison right now, in state prison, and I feel guilty about it. They're there for things that are victimless. It, as, it, if we could go back in time to the creation of our society, if the victimless crime principle was in place from day one, slavery wouldn't have been possible. Jim Crow wouldn't have been possible. The drug war wouldn't have been possible. And all of these things have been chipping away at the Constitution, have been chipping away at individual freedom, and these are things that are, it, it's just going to get worse unless people do something about it. So I guess um, what I'm trying to um, what I'm trying to, to tell you is that everything that Ernie talks about, all of these things are real. The police are trained not to care about your constitutional rights, but to do what they're ordered. Soldiers in the military, why even give the oath anymore to defend the Constitution? Because it's it's just it's feel good rhetoric that nobody follows. It's completely it's completely a waste of time. The the Constitution is I mean. There's just no way I can tell you enough that what the government does is criminal. What I did put it, um, going after people for victimless crimes is criminal. It doesn't matter if you're a government bureaucrat or not. The drug war is probably the number one thing that's eroding individual liberty. And I, I wish there was someone here who agreed with the drug war um, because that always always makes it better. I mean, when I was a speaker, when I was a speaker for law enforcement against prohibition, when I was a speaker at the Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, you know, I, I went out and I spoke to community groups and rotaries, and people, people are just so ingrained and indoctrinated, and so was I. I mean, if you say someone, I think drugs should be legal, they're like, oh, you want everyone to shoot up. But Dr. Ron Paul, did obviously the debate when he's like, heroin, come on, you need the government to tell you don't use heroin? Give me a break. Less than about 1.3% of people throughout the history of the United States have, have used hard drugs. And I don't think people should use hard drugs, but if you own your body, you should be able to. And right now, the state will kill you if, if they suspect that you grow a plant in your house. And how, how absolutely insane is that? Civil forfeiture, the state will steal your stuff if, 
if, even if you're not convicted, just because you grow a plant in your house. If you grow a plant in your house in New Hampshire, the government can seize your house and take it away. Okay, yes. Hold on a second. I want to tell this news breaking yesterday. You saw it on Freedom Phoenix, some of you guys. There was a guy, because they passed medical marijuana, that you can grow it and do it and whatever. Well, Jan Brewer or something is challenging it or something even though people want it, whatever. This guy is like, hey, I got my medical marijuana card. Well, there's no way to get it unless you supply it. So some guys called him up and they said, hey, yo, what's up? We see, you know, you're supplying and get, we'll come with our medical marijuana card and we'll come get some marijuana. Bring your butt on down, it's all good. Guys come in, guns try to rob him. Now, of course, he had a bunch of plants. He probably was growing before it started. But he had all of this, uh, you know, and, and uh, marijuana, I guess. They came in. He pulls a gun, kills one of the guys, and the other people fled. Drugs with a firearm, felony. Let me tell you right now, 18, 18 U.S.C. 924 Section C, if you possess a firearm during a drug trafficking offense, you get a mandatory prison sentence of five years. And mark my words, this is being videotaped. I predict the federal government is going to charge this man, which blatantly violates the Tenth Amendment because the people of Arizona have spoken, and what this guy was doing was legal under state law, but he was carrying a firearm while engaging in a drug trafficking offense, and he is going to be prosecuted and do five years in prison. I'm, I'm making that prediction here today, and that completely flies in the face of, of, of federalism. I mean, if you read the, the Federalist Papers, the purpose of the Interstate Commerce Clause was so that states don't enact tariffs on each other, and to say that the federal government can regulate growing a plane is just ridiculous. So thank you for letting me talk. I just wanted to say, most of you are probably voluntarists, but just don't realize it. Um, if the government is, is allowed the legitimacy to initiate violence, this is what happens. And no one should have the right to initiate force on anyone else, no matter what color uniform they wear or what they, what kind of credentials they have in their pocket. Using violence and force against anyone is always wrong. And that's why I quit my job. So. by the time we get back, 
uh, the person will have flushed their drugs down the toilet. And this is another example of how the drug war just arose and arose and arose. No, what, 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 they said, what, they, what they said was, the, if someone was scurrying about inside, that could be, um, in the, what he's talking about, are you talking about the one that, that says you can't re resist? Yes, say it. Is, is that the one you're talking about? Say it. Well, this, what, the, what the Indiana Supreme Court ruled is that there is no right to resist a subject officer entering your home under any service. No right. Oh, oh, oh. what? Yeah. That they, yeah. That there was there's Kentucky and there true. was Indiana. I think what you're talking about is Kentucky. Right, no, yeah. Right. The one you brought up is Kentucky, sir. Um, and this one is Indiana. Yeah. So, the, right. so the, the Kentucky one, the government says it's an exigent circumstance because drugs could be flushed down the toilet. We won't have that evidence to use in court. So essentially now all government agents have to do is listen and make something up and say, well, people were scaring about so we can kick in the door. Yes. And that's the drug war eroding, uh, eroding the Fourth Amendment. In the case of Indiana, what they was you have no right to resist an illegal police entry. I know why they said it, because the government is a monopoly on violence, and they don't want people to be sitting there and, and saying, well, geez, is this illegal or not, so I get, to make the, I get to make the determination. One thing that makes no sense is the government wants to have it both ways. The government says, we need no-knock warrants because we need to surprise people and catch them off guard. And then when they bust in houses and they catch people off guard and people take up guns, they say, well, they should have known we were the police. <laughs> That's what they say. They say, no knock warrants to surprise people so we can catch them off guard and collect evidence. And then when people shoot the police because they're home invaders, and, and just as a point of fact, they are home invaders. Just because people, people shoot the police, they say, well, they can charge them murder now because they should have known who we are. They said that for the same reason that in most states it's um, – you have to submit to an un unlawful arrest. In New Hampshire, if someone comes up to you and says, I'm arresting you because you're black, you have no right to fight against it. You have to submit, you have to put your hands behind your back, and you have to use the courts to, 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 to fight that. It's just another step. I mean, that fl it fl flies in the face of common law, freedom, and everything, because a person's home is their castle, and no one has the right to, to go in. Go ahead, down, folks, please. And again, both of these cases, both of these cases go back to my point that violence should never be used to solve nonviolent problems. It is saying that drug use and abuse is a societal problem, because it is, but using violence to solve the problem is the pro is, is, is why this happens. Unfortunately, the only tool government has to solve any problem. All you have is a hammer, everything's a nail. That's right, that's right. If, 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 if you need to kill ants on the sidewalk and you have a sledgehammer, it may, be, it may still be, it can kill a lot of ants, but if you take a step back and you look at the sidewalk, the sidewalk is absolutely destroyed. And again, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And I'm not saying I know the answers to solve these problems, but people like Stefan Molyneux, I mean, there are some excellent libertarian philosophers, and to, you, to, to not use violence, I mean, look at tobacco. At back in the 1970s, upwards of 70% of people smoked. No violence was used, and today less than 30% smoke. I mean, there are peaceful ways to solve problems. Yeah. I wouldn't say no violence was used because I consider taxation of tobacco to be... Oh, absolutely. To use the violence. Just that. That. Someone describe what happens, someone who thinks that taxation is not theft, ask them to describe what taxation is without using the word tax. I have a question. How does your family think about you now that you've um, had this enlightenment? I mean, are they disowning you? Are you married? Do you have kids, parents? I have two cats. I squirt them, <laughs> <laughs> I squirt them with their bathroom. Um, a lot of people don't oh, understand. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand when people when people shift to the liberty paradigm because people are brought up and indoctrinated so much in this you know in this mainstream you do what everyone says you watch CNN you watch Fox News if you say anything contrary to it people paint you as crazy the FBI the FBI issued a memo that that said that people who um, assert their constitutional rights are terrorists you guys must be aware of that oh yeah if we we're terrorizing. The FBI is a terrorist. If you look at the definition of terrorism, it fits exactly what the government does. What is? What is well, you know, one more question. The definition of terror, terrorism, if you type it into Google, the first thing that comes up, it says the use of force, intimidation, or violence 
to achieve ends uh, particularly political or religious. Of course. Of course, that's their definition. But you can't say that what happened here is not terrorism. Uh, this this is more of a threat to us than Al Qaeda. The government, you have a you have a much larger chance of a SWAT team wrongly raiding your house and putting a bullet in your head than you do of some suicide bomber. I have a question on the other officers. Quiet down, folks, please. When I, when I worked in law enforcement, probably the most disgusting thing that I had to do on a regular basis, and I shouldn't say had to do because I could have quit earlier, but is arrest 18 to 20 year olds. It is arrest 18 to 20 year olds for drinking booze because it, the politicians who support. Um, Looks more, man. The politicians who support the drinking age being 21. I'd love to ask them, how is it that if someone is 18 years old, they can go fight and die for the United yeah. States government, yeah. but they can't have a beer? How can, and, and not to mention that, but when you're 16, at least in New Hampshire, you're punished as an adult for drinking. So you're punished as an adult for something you're not, not adult enough to do in the first place. How does that make sense? So I, when, when the booking room used to be full of 18-year-olds of right after they uh, graduated high school, I used to say to my coworkers, what are we doing? We're taking these people's freedom away for having a party. No one was hurt. And, and, like, and that is exactly the way the government wants people to think. They do not want police officers who question the morality of things. They didn't want... Uh, imagine if you were... If you ask any police officer today, would you have enforced Jim Claws back in the 60s? And, and they'll say, no, of course not. But then they're enforcing the Jim Crow laws of today. And what is lacking right now is the perspective of history. And I predict that 50 years from now, if you ask a cop, would you have put someone in a cage over a plant? They'll say, no, of course not. But it's, today, it's what's happening. And the government does not want people who think. People like you guys are terrorists. I got to leave. Ash, go. Mr. Jarvis, would you say that in most law enforcement agencies in America that it's almost impossible to be a functioning member of LEAP because of the harassment issue? And number two, do you still believe in the work of LEAP? I believe, I, I do believe in the work of LEAP. I think LEAP is a great organization. When they kicked me out, I understand why they did it because to them it's a PR issue. So they, want, they don't want to look like a civilly disobedient organization. They want to puff their chests up and say, you know, we enforce the law as it's written, but we want to change the law. But there's no excuse for enforcing an immoral law. There's just no excuse for it. And um, do I think, uh, police officers are scared S-less to join Lee. And especially what, what happened to me, it's happening to a, a, a police officer uh, in Victoria, Canada right now. He joined, um, and he, he actually sent me an email and said that when he joined, his police chief called him in, and he told his police chief about me. He said, there's a cop in New Hampshire who, who's doing it right now. And he's been harassed, he's been ordered not to speak to the media. If you go on leap.cc, you can read more about what's happening to him. But I mean, Police officers are scared to, to join this, as they should be. Because if you speak out, if you were a cop in the 60s and you spoke out against Jim Crow, you would have been squished because that was what was going on. Yes, sir. What is the response to get, uh, I heard you answer about friends and family. Because you have before you did this and after you made new friends, new family. Do you have, what, what happened? Um, uh, one of my close friends in the liberty movement is Ian, uh, Ian Freeman. Uh, do you folks listen to Free Talk Live? I, I've been, I've been on, uh, on Free Talk Live a bunch of times. And Ian, um, I credit a great deal with helping me understand freedom and liberty. And also Sam Dodson. He uh, does the Obscure Truth Network. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. Um, my friends and family, it, 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 speaking about these types of things with people who don't understand, the cognitive dissonance kicks in when you point out to them that they, they hold... Um, they hold values that are incompatible. And um, a lot of people can get upset by it. And a lot of my family has listened and they understand what I say. I, I, I'm not really friends with too many cops anymore because I, I, cops don't like me. They think I'm terrible and they, they think I'm a dirty hippie who does drugs. Do they really or they yeah. just make you feel bad? Well, I, 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 it, it's, it, it's a big gang. It's a big team. The police academy teaches us versus them. There's bureaucrats and there's not. Cops don't get tickets. Cops don't arrest other cops, and um, it, it's I, I turned on my gang. You know, I, I crossed the thin blue line to say what, what was happening was wrong. They they want nothing to do with me. You know, but uh, I, I lost a bunch of good friendships because I left law enforcement. 
but being a moral person was more important to me than having a good job. Yeah. I just say they probably have a guilty conscience. If they think, and I hope, I hope and pray that some police officers take a second to, 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 to read some of the things I write on freekeem.com and to think for themselves that um, just because something's a law, just because a, a, a politician or police chief tells you to do something, doesn't relieve you of your responsibility to the Constitution, to your fellow man, and to do what's right. And um, I think 4409 is awesome, and I think Phoenix is awesome, and you guys are, are brave heroes. Thank you. An interesting meeting, anyway. I want to uh, uh, encourage you to come back next month. I'll, I'll go ahead and we'll make a big promotion out of Alan Corwin. He was um, uh, upset that I forgot to promote that he was coming, and that's why you know he could have come, of course. But he's always sending me emails like Monday, Tuesday, going, "Well, can you start promoting it yet? I'll be there." I mean, you know that kind of thing. So it's. Um, uh, we'll make a big deal out of him next month. I did go to his presentation at the Economic Discussion Group, and what it was is he's like, the apocalypse is here, now what? Basically. It was, when will society go down? What's the definition of that? How do you know? How will you prepare yourself? What will you be doing? That kind of thing. And what happened was is that he was in a position to meet with a lot of people, talk to a lot of people, and kind of had his own input that he was trying to, you know, you know, discuss with people what would happen. Do you stay at home? Do you leave? Do you go in the country? Or you should stay in the city? Do you have cash? Do you have silver? And he was surprised by one thing. He goes, all the people in the room, it was about, you know, over two dozen, and these are economic discussion groups. These, you know, they're probably a little bit, you know, more with resources. And he said, how many of you have the ability to survive water, food, ammo, all that kind of stuff for at least six months. Over half the people raised their hand. He was shocked by that. When he was saying, when it goes down, you need to have $10,000 in cash or whatever. Well, Eric Hofstetter and I started, you know, and we're like, yeah, I'll do you. Like, you know, when it goes down, it's going to be that. That's not going to be worth anything. That's the problem, you know. So, so, so right. I go, it's more compact, you know? Anyway, so it was, so it's an interesting conversation. I encourage you to do it. I'm sure he's probably researching to write a book. Now it'll be Alan on the Apocalypse, but you know, it'll, you'll get to have your say. So I encourage you to come then. It'll be very interesting, and Alan's always entertaining and a good speaker. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. The magazine, I encourage you to go to Freedoms Phoenix. If any one of you subscribe and can download it, it's free to forward, and then whoever gets that file, you can forward the snot out of it. That's why we did it this way. It's going to go viral on its own. So if you need it, you email me, publisher at freedomsphoenix.com, and I will send you a bootleg copy <laughs> so that you can forward it out. This is the beginning of the four years ago solution. Yes, you know, here in Arizona, we got started early, and it wasn't until about now, May, that it really kicked. And it was because we did a lot of base work. Well, we're doing base work now. Tomorrow they're having their money bomb for Ron Paul, and those that are interested, you know, can throw five bucks or something. But I'm, you know, we'll see what happens this time. I think that the people, and this is what I, before I turn it to Frank, I want to tell you this uh, two-minute story. When we started the Levolution, what happened was we sat down, a lot of people that had some money, and we were talking about how we're going to, we didn't want to have anything to do with the campaign. You know, political party voting, you know, we knew we weren't going to do that. But we knew Dr. Paul was going to be a great voice for liberty. He's going to define it. He's going to hold them up to it. He's going to put a mirror in their face to America and say, uh, uh, you still for the drug war? You still for going, let's go kill all the brown people? You know, anybody got a turban? We need to go, you know, nuke them. I mean, you know, is this seriously? Okay, this is what you're about? <laughs> And he says, we are known as a war, as a country that starts wars now. So they go, well, the terrorists have come over the border. And so, and I'll tell you something videotape. Guy, yeah, here we go. But the terrorists come across the border, which they don't stop at the border anyway. You know, you know they don't care about that. 
I go, you know, they go, well, they'll, they'll come do some, what? They're, they need Washington? They want to know where Washington is? I'll, I'll give them a map. So, you know, this is, you know, what they're trying to threaten us with, we're supposed to be so afraid of. What you see up here, the government, that's what we need to be afraid of. So, so, this, is, so this is so clear now that at, at the time, they weren't sure. They said, Ernie, if we do this, because they had confidence that I was going to be able to, you know, be part of this exploding and getting attention and this Levolution thing kicking off. I said, no, we're not going to delude the next generation. What's going to happen to them is the same thing that happened to me and Don. We're going to get in it. We're going to analyze it. We're going to be part of it. We're going to make every effort possible to check off every single box, and then we'll know. It's not going to ever work. That's what happened to Bradley. And over this next four years, or two years, so as we go through this, that's why we did this magazine, why we've had Freedoms Phoenix, why I do the radio, why we do the videos. That's why we do all this stuff. Michael Kilski takes care of making sure the Uber bad guys and Cummins Security want to take us down. So kind of, you know, here comes to shut off everything. You know, well, we got mirror sites in the backup and they're kind of doing the backup as the backup. And the reason is, is because I know they are afraid. There are those that just want to be left alone and those that just won't leave them alone. And the guys who won't leave us alone are coughing up blood. If you're a dinosaur, you know, and you're coughing up blood, you know, people should be scared of you. So I don't want to try and change the dinosaur. I don't want to fix them. I don't want to give them first aid. I just want to stay out of the way of the tail. You just keep coughing it up. Good. Okay, you know, poke them with a stick every night. Done? Okay, good. Now we can go build a new society. <laughs> Humanity marches on. I'm waiting for the death of government. And Karen in the Arizona legislature knows you're broke. It ain't never coming back. They, you have no money. They are going to, and it's going to be, they're going to promise you and give you and the federal government and Obama's got you by the strings and Jan's going whatever and Russell Pierce has got and they're going, and I don't freaking care. I'm just waiting for you guys to turn belly up and start going, Bleh, and then you're done, okay? So that's what's happening. You know, FYI, you tell them I said so, okay? So I just, I, I'm just, I'm just waiting. It's done. It's over. Don't worry about it. I already get it. I already knew this was going to happen a long time ago, and you know it. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. I'm gonna turn it over to Frank. Thanks for coming. There's a lot to be optimistic for, even though it's really bad. But we knew this was going to happen before it got better. Better's coming. It's just going to get really messy first. Fun? Yes. I tell all the people I'm associated with, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> all right, four books today. Back in the corner. First chance. Last four numbers. Two, four, three, nine. Okay, fast on your feet and uh, you get back there quick. Second chance, two, four, four, two. Two, four, four, two. Oh. Mute, Cambridge. <laughs> <laughs> Around here, we have to be broad-minded, you know. <laughs> okay, third chance. Two, four, one, eight. Two, four, one, eight. Over here. No. Glenn, back. This is Jeff DePhilippi. He does a lot of the graphics and stuff for everything that we do. Printer, prints a lot of the stuff. He's man. Okay. Fourth and last chance. Two, four, three, six. Ah. Oh. Two, four, three, six. <laughs> Here's the gentleman here. And there's a lot of new books. Don and I have been going through all our stuff. Did you bring them? Thank you. Yeah, we got all kinds of stuff from back in the day that, you know. I appreciate all the science books. Okay, this is more fun than we can stand for today, so I'll see you guys a month from now. <laughs> have a good month. Yeah. Uh,
Run out, 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 run out,